Remove your full mailing address, tables, graphics, pictures, personal statements, obvious skills like teamwork, time management. Those are basic skills every single human being should have regardless of whether you're applying for a job or not. Remove irrelevant work experience, high school, middle school information. Completely get rid of references available upon request. You don't have to state the obvious. Eliminate any and everything that can be used to discriminate against you. Hi guys and welcome to another job search career type of video. Today I want to share some tips on how you can actually increase or improve your chances of recruiters looking at your resumes and actually giving you a call to screen you and consider you for potential job opportunities. My name is Nicole and if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thank you for doing so. So a little background about myself, I work as a recruiter, that's my corporate job, 9 to 5 job, day job, whatever you want to call it, but I am a recruiter and I am a job search coach. So aside from doing recruitment work, working with candidates and clients on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm at work, when I'm outside of work, I am also working with different job seekers who are trying to get hired and I position them and coach them to guide them in their job search for them to be able to attract and be hired in their dream positions. So as a recruiter, and not just me, this is for recruiters in general, on average, we can work on, let's say, 5 to sometimes 25, 30, sometimes even 40 jobs at one time. So that means simultaneously, I could be working on 15 completely different positions, dealing with different hiring managers and different companies. And even if it's an internal corporate recruiter, they could be working on 15 different positions that are within the same company company but different hiring managers and different departments so that means a recruiter receives hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of applications and it's just not realistic as a recruiter for me to call every single person that's going to apply for a job even if I wanted to it's just not gonna work. And so as a job seeker for recruiters to contact you, you have to do your part. You have to make your resume somewhat attractive and you know, like sort of like a bait to attract recruiters to look at your resume and be like, I want to contact this person. To be honest, if I have 100 resumes, your resume has to stand out for me to decide to call you over the 99 other resumes that I have. So typically what happens when a recruiter is going through resumes is they will have different piles. The first pile is when we look at a resume and we're like, yes, I really want to connect with this person. Oh my goodness, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Yes, finally, I found like a star. I found my A candidate. Your resume will give a recruiter that kind of feel, that kind of vibe. The second pile is Hmm, this person looks good, not bad, but let me see what else is out there. Let me see what other resumes I will come across. I'm not completely saying no. I'm not saying yes, yes, yes either. They look qualified for the job, but I don't know. There's just something missing. That X factor element is not there, but I'll still consider them. Let me see what else I come up with. And then the third pile is like, hmm, no, there's absolutely no way I am contacting this person. Like, why did this person even apply for this job? Like, did they apply for the job in their sleep? Like, what is this? This is so frustrating. These are the kind of people that waste my time, you know? So that's the third power. And so your objective as a job seeker should obviously be to make it to the first pile where the recruiter looks at your resume and they're like, oh, wow, I really want to connect with this person. Where sometimes they'll even be like, you know what, let me drop everything else that I'm doing and call this person before anybody else call them. And so in today's video, I just want to share with you five things or five elements that recruiters on average are looking at when they're screening candidates. You know, here and there, the reasoning or the logic might be different, but for the most part, these are the things that the standard recruiter is going to be looking at, whether you're applying directly to the company and it's a corporate recruiter, or whether you're applying through the agency and it's an agency recruiter, we are all looking for these five things and we want to see these five things in your resume to really get excited about calling you and connecting with you and potentially presenting your resume to the hiring manager. So 
the very first thing is do you have the relevant skill set? You would think that this is so obvious, but in working in recruitment, I've actually learned that no, it's not obvious. Most people don't actually realize that you need some sort of skill set for that job that you're applying for. So you want to ask yourself, do I have the skill set for this job? Am I just like applying to like try my luck? Or can I actually do it? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to be like a bang on fit, 10 out of 10 in order to apply for a job. Not necessarily. And something that I always tell people to do, especially in my coaching practice, is to fill up a suitability map. Let's say you have a particular job you want to try out for. Look for three job descriptions for that same role because, you know, different companies have different job descriptions. So come up with three separate job descriptions for that one role. List down the skills on one side and then on another side try and list out your relevant experiences what tangible experience you can think of that you actually have that matches that skill if you can come up with like at least 50 percent of the skills then yeah give it a try why not but if you can come up with like at least 75 to 80 percent of the skills then you have a stronger chance of recruiters contacting you for that position especially if you're working with an agency because you have to remember that if you're working with an agency they're being paid by a company to find you right and a company is not going to pay a fee no matter how much it is ten thousand fifteen thousand twenty thousand dollars for somebody who's not qualified and somebody who doesn't have the right skill set so always ask yourself if you're actually skilled or qualified for that job in addition to being skilled for that job you want to make sure that you remove irrelevant skills as well so let's say you're applying for a new role and you have certain skills that are on your resume that are not relevant just remove them because you're just like using up space unnecessarily where you could be focusing on other things that are relevant to that job you're applying for. The next thing is your current role. Your current role is super important. Over here, you want to ask yourself questions like, have you included the best parts of what you do? A lot of people actually take their job descriptions and that's what they list on their resume. If I look at your resume, I'm going to be able to tell in just a matter of seconds if you've copied verbatim from your job description or if this is like your original writing and you're actually telling me what it is you do on a daily basis or whatever it is you are including on your resume so list out the best parts of what you do and when I say the best parts I'm referring to the parts that are relevant to the job that you're applying for not the best parts that you think are exciting for you or you think are fancy you want to talk about what capacity you work with others are there any projects that you're working on that you worked on in the past that you actually took a lead on and that was successful and that saved the company money or saved the company time your current role or your most recent role is the one that we're going to look at first so it's important that you really lay it out properly and you explain to us in a clear and concise manner what it is that you do without bombarding us with too much information but focusing on what's important what is relevant to the job that you are applying for if you impress me in that first current role then you know I'm gonna be intrigued to keep reading further it's also important that you communicate the value and impact that you bring to the table so listing out what it is you do is not enough that's just like a basic that is just a standard requirement you need to tell us what you're doing but in addition to telling us what you're doing or what you've done you need to be able to quantify your value so we want to see numbers we want to see figures we want to see the type of impact you've had in your current role in past roles don't be afraid of selling yourself your resume is a branding document and so you're supposed to sell yourself that is exactly what you're supposed to do obviously you don't want to be like overzealous or anything like that but you do want to sell yourself and you do want to make yourself appear in a certain light so don't be afraid to mention your successes and sometimes i know like with certain positions you might not have a specific figure to say okay i improved sales for example by 30% within an eight month period. But every single job has metrics that you can measure. Let's say for example, if you are an office manager or an administrative assistant, and you're not necessarily dealing with like numbers or figures like some other roles would. Maybe you came up with an easier process, with an easier 
template that's going to reduce the time it takes to key in something from 10 minutes to seven minutes that is an accomplishment so in whatever it is that you do don't like overthink it or think too much out of the box because then you like be thinking okay i have nothing to say even in the simplest thing you can find a way that you improve the process you can find a way in which you save the company time you can find a way in which you've saved the company money if you're working in customer service you can list maybe an example or two examples of how you saved the company high value clients about how a client was super angry and you turned around a frustrated customer into a loyal customer no matter what it is that you do trust me there is a way of finding the value and the impact that you have had the fourth thing and this is so important is we want to see consistency so does your resume tell a story are you a job hopper like have you gone from job a doing a to job D doing something completely different, to job X doing something completely different. Like what story is your resume telling? And not that there's anything wrong with doing different kind of roles, but we want to see a connection. We want to see a story. Like how is it, you know, flowing? It can't just be like completely random. If your resume is not telling a consistent story, people shy away. And even if you've done separate, completely different roles, communicate it in a way that there is a flow. How do your past roles or your most recent role or the role before your most recent role align with the job that you've just sent in your resume for? Is there a connection or is it like something completely different night and day? Tell us a story. Make your resume easy to read. I already mentioned recruiters are filtering through hundreds of resumes. You want to make it easy for them. You don't want them to receive your resume and your resume has got good information, but they're flipping through your resume and they're like, this is just too complicated. Like, you know, just make it easy to read. 99% of candidates make the mistake of wanting to put everything in their resume because they think everything is relevant and they want the recruiter or the hiring manager to see everything. But for the most part, I will tell you that recruiters don't read everything that's on your resume. Information overload is never a good thing. Stick to the most important things, like the critical things that are relevant to the role you're applying for. Everything else you've done is really not that important and if it is important you can discuss it with the hiring manager you can discuss it with the recruiter once they contact you during the phone interview during the video interview during the in-person interview but don't put too much information on your resume and I've seen like a lot of people saying that your resume should only be one page that's a lie your resume doesn't have to be only one page unless you're a recent graduate but if you do have working experience there's nothing wrong with having a two-page resume a three-page resume depending on your seniority and you know how many jobs you've had but even if your resume is two three pages don't bombard us with too much information give us the information that is important and so the next time you're applying for a job or you're redoing your resume, I want you to ask yourself these five questions. Do I have the relevant skill set? Did I present my current role in the best light? Did I communicate my value and impact? Is my resume telling a story? Is it clear and concise? These are the things that are at the back of recruiters' heads when they're going through resumes. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend that you know is looking for a job. I do have a dedicated page on Instagram where I share job search tips. So follow that page for more job search tips and I will see you in the next video.